Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing thrombosis and antithrombotic drugs. Okay, so we have now um, discussed both the vasoconstrictive part of the hemostatic response and also the platelet aggregation uh, portion of the um, uh, hemostatic response. So we've discussed that when you get a hole in the side of your blood vessel, what's going to happen is firstly you're going to have a uh, von Willebrand factor exposed on these disturbed endothelial cells, which will bind to the GP1B95 on the surface of platelets. That will allow a few platelets to adhere to uh, the surface of uh, the disturbed endothelial cells. And then what will happen is that some other platelets will go through and be activated by exposure to collagen and uh, tissue factor within the deeper layers of the blood vessel wall. Okay, this, uh, these activated platelets will release from boxane A2 and ADP. ADP will lead to a chain reaction of uh, activating more pl platelets so that loads of platelets in the vicinity of this hole, they're all going to be activated, and therefore you're going to get massive levels of thromboxane A2 uh, being accumulated near in the vicinity of this hole. The thromboxane A2 will cause vasoconstriction of uh, the blood vessel to reduce the amount of blood that can get through to where this hole is, and it will also cause the activation of the GP2B3A uh, uh, receptor on the platelets and uh, this will lead to the platelets becoming sticky, so platelets will start to adhere to the platelets which have already stuck to the uh, sides of the disturbed endothelial cells, and then what you'll form is this uh, primary platelet plug, which will plug in uh, the hole in the side of the blood vessel. However, we've discussed that this primary platelet plug is not actually that strong. So in order to make it stronger, what we need to do is produce a, um, a fibrous infrastructure which intertwines amongst all of the platelets and holds them all together, basically seals them all together. Okay, and in order for this to occur, we need to produce such a fibrous protein, and this is going to be fibrin strands. So we're finally going to discuss this process of coagulation, uh, where a, um, uh, an inert uh, precursor, fibrinogen, or factor 1, is going to be activated to fibrin, or factor 1A, which will then be assembled into a polymer of fibrin strands, uh, and those fibrin strands will then be used to make this, uh, uh, this mesh work that's going to hold the platelets together. Okay, so, let's now discuss the process of coagulation then. So, strictly speaking, coagulation means the conversion of fibrinogen, which is this inert uh, protein within the blood, okay, into fibrin strands, okay? So, what you're going to start off with is fibrinogen here, and we've discussed that fibrinogen is the new name for what would have once been called coagulation factor 1, okay? Uh, and it's going to be converted into fibrin, and fibrin is called factor 1A. Okay, so it's the activated form of factor 1. And I will stop writing the factor because it's going to become very tiring to continue writing factor because we're about to look at the coagulation cascades where there are absolutely loads of coagulation factors. Okay, the fibrin will then be polymerized into fibrin strands, okay, by the enzyme factor 13A. So I'll put 13A here. So the Roman numeral for 13 is an X, which is 10, followed by a 3. So 13A catalyzes that reaction. And then you will have your fibrin strands, which will intertwine amongst uh, the platelets making up the primary platelet plug, and uh, will form this mesh work that will hold the platelets together, converting it into a secondary hemostatic plug. So we need to look at what triggers the conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin then. Okay, now there are two pathways which can activate the conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin, okay? And the first of these is what's known as the intrinsic coagulation pathway, or the intrinsic coagulation cascade. So, the intrinsic pathway then. So the intrinsic pathway is activated by exposed 
collagen. So you remember that we've discussed how platelets can also be activated by two things. So in platelet activation, when a platelet starts releasing ADP and thromboxane A2, that process of activation can be initially activated by two things, collagen and tissue factor. And we're going to see that the exact two things, collagen and tissue factor, are going to activate the coagulation cascade. So it's collagen which activates the intrinsic pathway, and um, exposed uh, tissue factor will activate uh, the uh, extrinsic pathway. So let's draw a picture here. So here's our hole in the side of the blood vessel wall again. So here's our disturbed endothelial cell here, which has been chopped in half. Okay, and then we have the basement membrane, which again, remember, is mainly made up of collagen. So in turquoise, there's the basement membrane here. Okay, then we have um, the subendothelial connective tissue in red here. Okay, and then surrounding that, we have this um, internal elastic lamina. Now, basically, when you have this hole in the side of the blood vessel wall, what's going to happen is that blood is going to start coming out of the lumen of the blood vessel and going through uh, into this hole, basically, and then it will be exposed to these deeper layers of the blood vessel wall. So remember, the constituents of the blood, all they usually see is the other constituents of the blood, and also the apical surfaces of the endothelial cells. So now, the constituents of the blood is going to see a whole new array of molecules and cells. Okay, and we've already discussed how this will affect the platelets. Now we're going to talk how it's going to affect the coagulation proteins. So, the intrinsic pathway starts with coagulation factor 12, okay? So X and then 2 for 12. And factor 12 also has another name. It's also known as Hageman factor, and you will hear it referred to as Hageman factor, so it's quite an important name. Okay, so factor 12, or Hageman factor, is a normal constituent of the blood. It is circulating round and round your circulatory system. Okay, now when you get this hole in the side of the blood vessel, uh, coagulation factor 12 will come through here, and it will meet collagen for the first time. It had never seen collagen before, and collagen is going to cause uh, the activation of factor 12. And when you have the activated factor 12, that's known as factor 12A, or you would also call this activated Hageman factor. Okay, so collagen activates Hageman factor, or factor 12. So factor 12 comes out of the lumen of the blood vessel into this hole, meets deeper portions of the blood vessel wall, specifically collagen, and is then activated to the activated form. Okay, so what does the activated form of factor 12 then do? Well, basically, it then sets off a whole coagulation cascade. Okay, so it then activates another uh, component of the um, blood. So it's going to activate the protein factor 11. Okay, so here is 11, and 11 will be converted into 11A by the activated factor 12. So, overall, when you're exposed to collagen, that will activate factor 12, and factor 12 will then activate factor 11. So overall now, collagen has activated factor 11. Okay, and it doesn't stop there, unfortunately. Factor 11 then um, activates factor 9. Okay, so the Roman numeral for 9 is IX, like so. So it activates 9 to 9A, okay, and then what's going to happen is that 9A is going to combine with a cofactor, which is the uh, coagulation factor 8A. And let me just discuss what a cofactor actually is. So, 9A is an enzyme, okay? So let's draw a picture of an enzyme. So here is our enzyme, here. And that's not the active site, that little indent that I've drawn there. Here's the active site. So this is the active site of the enzyme here. So this is where the substrate will come in and the reaction will be catalyzed. Okay, now the enzyme 9A is not yet 
fully active. In order to be activated so that it will actually catalyze the reaction that it's uh, going to catalyze, it needs another little protein to come and bind in this little socket here. And the protein which comes and binds in this little socket of the larger enzyme is what's known as a cofactor. So the cofactor is utterly essential for the function of the enzyme, but it isn't part of the enzyme itself. Okay, so the enzyme here is the 9A, and 8A then is the cofactor. So it will come and bind to a little socket within the 9A enzyme and activate that enzyme to form an active enzyme complex. Okay, now what is this active enzyme complex going to activate? Well, it's going to activate factor 10. So here comes 10, and 10 will be converted to 10A. Okay, right, so uh, you might ask, well, where is 8A going to come from? And I'll discuss that in a moment. So 10A also has a cofactor, just like 9A. So basically, 10A's cofactor is the coagulation factor 5A. So here is 5A. So 5A will sit in a little um, socket of 10A and will activate 10A. And then what they will do is convert prothrombin to thrombin. Okay, so prothrombin will go to thrombin. Now, we've seen that fibrinogen is factor 1. We've seen that tissue factor is factor 3. Prothrombin, the old name for prothrombin, is to call it factor 2. So if you're wondering where factor 2 is, that's where factor 2 is. It's been renamed because it's so important, it's been renamed prothrombin. Okay, and when factor 2 is activated, it will go to factor 2A. And the new name for factor 2A is to call it thrombin. Okay, so, basically, what has happened then overall is when you have exposed um, collagen, what that's going to lead to is the activation of this protein prothrombin to thrombin. Now, what does thrombin do? Well, firstly, uh, it's going to actually lead to a positive feedback of this loop. So I think I'll talk about that second, actually. I'll firstly tell you exactly what thrombin is going to do. So thrombin is going to catalyze the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin, and then you can assemble the fibrin into um, fibrin strands, okay? So fibrinogen, or uh, factor 1, is going to be converted to fibrin, okay? So here's fibrin, and fibrin's other name, or old name, is factor 1A, okay? And then this will be assembled into fibrin strands by the enzyme factor 13A, fibrin strands, by uh, factor 13A. Okay, so here's 10, 3 to make 13, and 13A. Okay, right, so, basically, overall, the big picture of what has happened here is that when you've got exposed collagen, you are starting to convert fibrinogen into fibrin, i.e. exposed collagen is causing coagulation. All of this mess in between is just details, basically. The overall message of the intrinsic pathway is that when you've got exposed collagen, i.e. the constituent proteins of the blood, the coagulation factors, when they're exposed to collagen, it will cause the conversion of fibrinogen, which is inert, into fibrin, which will um, polymerize to form fibrin strands. Okay, so you have coagulation. Right. Now, I promised to tell you where 5A and 8A come from, and basically, there's a positive feedback loop. So, thrombin is responsible for increasing the levels of both 8A and 5A. Okay, so you might think, well, this isn't very good, because we can't produce thrombin until we have got 8A and 5A, and yet to get 8A and 5A, you need thrombin. That's just, you know, there's no beginning to that. Uh, but the reality is that there will never be absolutely no 8A and 5A within the blood. So, initially, when 9A and 8A are both very low, then they won't produce anything significant. However, when the collagen is exposed, what will happen is 12 will activate to 12A, 12A will activate 11 to 11A, 
and that will activate a huge amount of factor 9 to 9a, okay? So now this, this, well, this massive amount of 9a, and we've got a tiny amount of 8a, but now that will be enough to actually make some functional enzyme complexes. So you'll get a little bit of 10 converted to 10a, and this will now uh, increase the production of 10a, 5a functional complexes, and then they will start converting prothrombin to thrombin, and this will have a positive feedback effect because the thrombin will now increase the amounts of 8a and 5a that you have, and therefore, um, the large amount of 9A you have will now be paired with a large amount of 8A, so you'll have a much greater number of active enzyme complexes. So you'll get a large amount of 10 converted to 10A, and you've got now a large amount of 5A, so that will lead to uh, a large amount of 10A, 5A complex, and they'll then convert prothrombin to thrombin. Okay, so Basically, this functions as a positive feedback loop, whereby the activation of the intrinsic pathway can then lead to the further activation of the intrinsic pathway. Okay, but the overall message is that collagen being exposed is going to lead to the conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin strands. Okay, so you're going to get this protein strand being formed, and this will be happening concurrently with the platelet aggregation, so that you're getting these fibrin strands deposited amongst the platelets which are aggregating together. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video, and in the, and in the next video we'll discuss the extrinsic coagulation cascade.